Hey everyone, so today's project that I, I want to get done is, uh, well I got a couple projects, but the main one I want to do here is uh, build the uh, brackets for my ignition uh, coils. So <clears throat> if you remember from some previous videos, I'm going to go with a Ford EDIS ignition system. A um, few reasons for this one is that it, it is a, it's a very high quality, very durable system. Ford uh, started making this, uh, putting this on production vehicles in the early 90s. So it's a little bit dated at this point, and it does have a, a maximum of about 6,500 RPM before it starts to have issues. Since I'm planning on this engine topping out at between 5,500 and 6,000, that won't be a problem for me. But it's a system I've always really liked and wanted to work with for a long time. So. As I said in other videos, I want to mount the coils uh, to the front of the heads. Um, and uh, this is actually the same position that Ford used on the 4.6 liter engines. So um, that's a, it's, it's a good location. To make my brackets, I went and I bought um, some 16 gauge steel. Probably a little bit thicker would have been better. Um, I went with six inch wide and uh, 18 inches long, figuring that would be enough for both brackets. Um, as you can see, I cut it in half and I've bent up the first bracket. Basically, this is four inches and that's five inches. Um, I'm also then going to take a piece of metal on either side and kind of weld it diagonally for some extra strength. I've got some scrap metal up there that I may be able to use or I may have to go buy some uh, in which case I probably won't get the brackets finished this week this weekend but that's okay uh, as far as location goes the only area I really need to look at for interference is between this passenger side head and making sure that I'm not going to be blocking off either of those coolant ports on the water pump I think I'm going to be okay there um, but I, I can't let the I can't let things hang over too much, or I'm going to get into an issue there. So that's the first part. Let me get going on doing a little bit more work here, and I'll uh, show you some progress updates. All right, so I've got my first bracket made up, and let me, let me maybe show you a couple of different things in this area. So. So if you take a look at the coil itself, the coil is only about two and a half inches wide this direction. So if you put it up against the head here, it, it mostly has enough room to, to, clear, these, uh, to clear, clear these plugs or these um, ports on the water pump. And by the way, you need these for the bypass uh, from the thermostat housing and uh, for the heater. So these are important. Um, but then you've got the connector on the front of the coil that's going, that, that's going to interfere. And the other thing is, let's see if I can both hold the phone and show you what I'm trying to show you. Other thing is you have the connectors for the spark plug wires. So if you have it right up against here, you're not gonna be able to make it fit. So um, slight modification to the plan. What I'm gonna do instead of, originally I was thinking I'll put the bracket like this. I'm gonna put the bracket like this. That will then go against the head mount the coils up top. I can still mount them towards towards the back, but then because the valve cover is gonna be here, that's gonna give me more clearance for my wires, and that's gonna give a lot more clearance for the, uh, for the ports on the water pump. Now, the one port on the water pump is just gonna go from the thermostat housing here down to there, so that's not going to be an interference anyway, but this one, um, this one's going to actually go up to the heater. Um, obviously, I can't route it over here by the exhaust 
uh, by the exhaust manifold, that would not work out very well. So that's going to have to go up. But I think by having the coils up here, I can do some kind of routing. It may have to be um, a little bit unconventional uh, to get around this area here, but I think I can probably trim away enough material that that will work. So uh, let me start marking and cutting holes for the coils. And let's see how this works. All right, I'm about ready to cut my hole here. So kind of give you an idea of what we're doing. Like I said, I'm gonna mount the coil on the top. I want the coil as close to the back as possible. That's, that's also gonna, I think, generally make this bracket more likely to last um, because I will admit this is, this is probably thinner metal than what you'd really want. Uh, the Ford brackets used probably eight or 16 or 3 16 inch thick uh, steel, but then again, it's a production application. And this is what they had at Tractor Supply. So I'm going to start off with this one. And I think I can beef it up enough to uh, that it'll work out just fine. So if you look at the bottom side of the coil, basically you need to cut a hole so that this, can, this portion can stick through. Can't be too wide because these are the mounting holes in the corners. So basically this just needs to slip through the bottom. So made that hole. I'm going to cut that with the angle grinder. What I then plan on doing is leaving a bit extra up here and then cutting off the excess. So now we'll grind the hole and then uh, we'll see how well it fits. The other thing I'm gonna have to do is create a template for, um, for those mounting holes there that you can see. So the one that, we, that there's bolts in right now on either side, that's actually the EGR port. So these uh, heads from Edelbrock have the EGR ports. You can block them off if you don't need them, which I don't. Um, but then there's the other mounting holes on there so that I'm going to need to use. So I'm going to have to I'm going to have to cut holes for all three of those, or drill holes for all three of those in there, uh, so that I can mount. All right, cut the holes in the brackets here, and as you can see, that fits mount perfectly. And you can see how it sticks underneath a bit. There's a little bit of a a little bit sticking up there. I'll take the, the grinder to get that down a bit. Um, and then uh, need to drill those holes. This one was the first one, and I guess I got my measurement off because if you look, the hole on the right is significantly bigger than the hole on the left. Um, not sure how I messed that one up, but I did. So. The, the coil still fits, it's just that it wiggles back and uh, forward and back a little bit. Obviously, once I drill the, the mounting holes, it'll stop doing that. I think it'll work fine. I'll just uh, keep the coil biased towards the back side of it. So, now drill a few more holes. Well, here's the uh, effectively finished product. Uh, I still have to do some uh, a little bit more painting to finish these up. But um, after getting the metal cut and uh, bent up, cutting the holes for the ignition coils, um, I then cut some scrap metal that I had laying around. And uh, I guess now I need more scrap metal. And then uh, welded them in place. So I don't have a very good welder. It's just a, a cheap Harbor Freight uh, flux core. Uh, one of these days I need to get myself a good setup with uh, or at least argon for a MIG welder, or um, maybe even moving up to a TIG, but I don't weld all that often, and my general policy is that if it's something that actually matters, like, um, you know, a frame for a car, or if it's uh, something structural where it could really cause a problem if it broke, then I let a professional do it. Um, but uh, if not, I'll do it myself. And in this case, my uh, seven-year-old uh, son wanted to help uh, weld, so I, I let him help, and uh, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> uh, anyone who's a parent kind of knows how that goes, but uh, he had a lot of fun with it. But I guess those welds look okay. End result, um, structurally, these are these are pretty sound, I think. Uh, it's 16 gauge steel. I would have liked to go a little bit thicker if I could have found it, but um, I but uh, that was what they had in the right size. 
And, um, you know, I, I don't have good metal working tools. Um, it'd be nice to have a full shop with uh, a mill or at least even a drill press, but I'd really like to get a mill one of these days. That would make some of these, making some of these holes a whole lot easier to do uh, neatly. Um, I don't have a brake, that's why uh, in, earlier in the video you saw uh, me using my, my press with a couple of clamps to, uh, to hold the metal in place so that I could bend it. So, you know, this is uh, somewhat rudimentary um, tools. That said, <coughs> these aren't too attractive, but here's why I'm okay with it, is if you take a look right here, this is how this is gonna mount. And so what you're really going to see uh, when the hood is opened is you're going to see this angle. So, so yeah, this part with the uh, ugly weld is going to be visible. Um, but mostly what you're going to see is you're going to see this view with the coil sitting on top. Um, so I, I'm not too concerned about that. Like I said, structurally, I think it's going to be fine. Um, and if it does break, then uh, I'll find some thicker metal to make these out of. So, but um, anyway, this is how this is how I decided to go ahead and make the brackets for these EDIS coils on a 351. Um, <clears throat> if you're if you're watching this and if you've researched using EDIS on anything, um, you know that on the 302s they had a bracket that basically sat right around in here um, that held the coils and I probably could have made that work um, I just really don't like how that aesthetic would have been um, I, I don't want the coils to be what you see uh, pronounced when you open the hood I'd, I'd rather have them be on the heads I think that I think that's gonna look better and not take away from the the shiny stack injection you know the whole reason i did that was um obviously there's a performance reason but from the aesthetic of opening the hood you know i, I want people to see that when they when i open it up so i think that'll be good and uh i'm gonna have to make spark plug wires but i knew that already um <clears throat> i think one last comment i wanted to make is that uh we're over 200 subscribers now uh so thanks to everybody who has subscribed um, and if, uh, if you do like these videos, then, um, please do hit the subscribe button. Uh, I know there's a good amount of varied content on the channel. Most of it's around the Cobra, but then I throw in some other things of whatever I'm working on. So, so there's a good variety. So if you're, if you're a, a gearhead of any sort, there's probably something you're going to enjoy. I may do a couple more things on the car today. Um, it's Sunday uh, morning right now. But I think I'm going to keep this video separate just because it's, a, it's an individual topic that uh, might be interesting to uh, pretty much anybody who wants to put uh, this sort of ignition system on a Ford. Uh, one other thing that's important to note is if, you're, if you are going to use EDIS, you do want to make sure that you're building an engine that is going to have a red line of under uh, of 6,500 RPM or less. That 6500 is basically where the coils start to um, um, <clears throat> lose their ability to produce a good spark. Uh, part of this is because it's a it's a wasted spark uh, setup where you've got not only are you making uh, you're you're making spark twice uh, twice per cycle, so once per revolution on each spark plug, and that's also because you're firing off the pair of spark plugs at the same time. So you're firing off both of these, you're firing off both of these. So if you think about it, it's kind of like running the engine at 13,000 RPM instead of 6,500. Um, so for most people, this isn't an issue. This engine should redline at somewhere between 5,500 and 6,000, I think is where the power is gonna start to drop off. So I, for, for me, this is fine. Um, but if I'd gone a different direction that I was that I was thinking about with trying to build a really high revving 302, something that did like 7,500 to 9,000 RPM, uh, I would want to investigate a different ignition solution 
um, whether it was something more exotic on the distributor side or um, doing an individual coil on plug with a cam sensor and something like uh, LS1 coils. Um, and some people have done that even on Fords. There's a lot of ways to go about doing that. So just a little note for people considering this. EDIS is dated now, uh, but it is a really, it is still a really good quality OEM ignition setup. So depending on what you're going for, it can be a, it can be a good solution. Gets rid of some of the headaches of distributors. Um, and it's pretty, and it's easy to set up and tune uh, if you have the right, uh, right controller. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Leave any comments if you have any. Um, and uh, see you again soon.